Hi, this is Dina Tollefson. Hey, thank you for joining me. Today we're going to start working on a pear painting. So begin with, this is just a 5 by 7 um, stretched uh, cotton canvas. I've, uh, I've toned that canvas, or toning it means that I've, move this over a little bit here, um, I've uh, put a wash of yellow ochre over with a giant brush just to get the initial white color off of the canvas and to uh, and to give it a good start. Then uh, what we're going to do is is start laying in the location of where our pairs are going to be. So I would like to do two pairs. So I'm going to put I'm going to have it be two pairs on a table. So let me start by drawing a line for the table. And then let's figure out where these pairs are going to be. Now, uh, size-wise, I'm going to make it so that they sit, oh, maybe about here and go about this tall. We'll put him about here. And then let's put her, let's have her bottom end over about here. And then let's have her, we want her to overlap him. So he's going to go something like this, and like that, and he'll have a stem. And let's have her go something like, there's her, her bottom, and I'm going to make a straight line for her so I know what I'm drawing. Let's have her go something like this. and end about here. And just kind of draw in like that. So this straight edge I'm using is just a, uh, this is a thing my father had when he was in engineering school. You can use a ruler or anything else that works for you that has a straight edge. So now I'm going to get rid of these extra lines that I have in the middle because we don't need them. Just go ahead and get rid of those here. I'll scrub that out. Now technically you have, right now, <clears throat> technically you've got a abstract painting. <laughs> we don't have to go any further than this. This is all, if you think about, you know, what's abstract, what's realism. Um, abstract is just literally something which is abstracted from realism. We think about what is needed to make something representational. What is needed to make something look real? Well, we have to have a source of light. We have to have shadows. So let's put in uh, I'm thinking I would like to do this as a red background and then a, like a light colored foreground just for a nice contrast. So in thinking about this, if the light is coming from this direction, then I'll want to have some highlights on the pairs here and they will need to be casting shadows into the wall here and onto the ground and on the wall here. So it's kind of nice to start out with with the shadows just so I kind of know what I'm doing or where those shadows are going. And shadows need to be soft. So I'm just laying this in with a mix of yellow ochre and phthalo blue red shade, which is a favorite color of mine. It really makes a beautiful blue when you um, Makes a beautiful blue when you put phthalo blue red shade in with uh, with just white. Let's draw the shadows here. There we go. And there's a principle in painting called grounding something. When you have an object, you want to make sure it's what we call grounded. 
or it's really attached to the earth. When we do this, we can really increase our sense of, of if something is realistic or not. Our sense that it belongs to the ground. So I'm just putting these initial indications in. Now let's think about adding in the idea of getting some volume on our pairs. So let's think about putting in some shapes that are going to give us the feeling that our pair has three-dimensionality. So what I'm doing here is I am working into this area that I've already laid in for the initial start. Let's get the foreground going. So this is our lightest area. This is going to indicate to us where the light is coming from, just so that we know it's going to be coming in on the cloth. It's also going to be coming in directly on the pairs. So we'll just let this light kind of rake through and come right on to the fruit like so. Then there's also in this same area kind of a more golden color. This is where the light is still there but it's just not quite as bright. Let's get that going here as well as back here. Blend that right into the shadow that we're starting. This painting is just a matter of refining. You just uh, you get started in one area, and then you just kind of keep adding your depth. I've mixed up on my uh, palette here. I'll show you my palette. I've mixed up a color right here which is this, let's see if you can see it right here, this color here, which I'm going to use to represent the shadow of the pear as it meets the tablecloth. And it's important on shadows that you have a soft edge. It's all about a soft edge. So let's get a little shadow going under here as well. And you know there'll be just a tiny shadow in here. And then let's lay in the background. So because I'm gonna, I'm thinking of an overall red color scheme, what I'll do here is I'll use orange to represent where the the light is um, is affecting the red, so because red plus a lot of light is going to create kind of a orangey red color. Let's let that color kind of sweep over the side of the of our pear. Put him over here. Go like that. And let's let that color just kind of come on over here too, kind of bathe onto her bottom side. And now coming back in with some red, let's blend these colors together. Let there be a soft transition between the orange and the red. And you can do this really, I mean, any color background, any color 
foreground that you like, whatever you like to use will work. Now I'm going to mix in a little bit of alizarin crimson with my red to make a darker edge. So as the light, trying to really just capture the idea of light hitting the pears and hitting our our setup. It's a uh, it's the idea that when light is hitting the object, then the object is going to be warmer because I'm using a warm light. And as it's further away from the light source, then we're going to have this kind of this darker effect. And now let's think about the shadow. So the shadow here that we're creating needs to be relating to the red, but let's go Let's go darker with it. Let's go get a little bit of this. I can even go darker. There we go. I'm just going to kind of let that edge go soft. And then let's think about the shadow that we're casting here. And let that edge be really soft too because, again, shadows are really things which have a soft, gentle edge. So I'm just coming back in with my brush the other direction. And I'm going to soften up that edge because I want it to feel like it's not an object in and of itself. I want it to feel like it's pushed back and it's a result of the cast light. There we go. And then let's let some of that color brush up onto the edge of the pears. And as we work on the painting, we can continue to further develop these things. So now let's address the insides of the pears themselves. So working from the highlight out, I'm going to put a little bit of, here's titanium white, just a little bit on the tip of my brush. And I'm just going to indicate on here where my highlights are so I know to save those. Let's go like over here and then the top of her fruit she's got. So there's a little bump here. He's got a little pot belly. <laughs> and, then, and then here's his chest. And then here we're starting in her hip area. I like to think about these pairs as, as people in love. And I had a, a neat thing happen. Um, the gallery that represents me, um, I was at an opening and a woman came up to me and said that she had a feng shui reading. And um, the feng shui uh, person expert told her to put pears in her relationship corner. And so what she did is she went out and bought some of my pear paintings. She hung them in her bedroom and she was showing me that she had a engagement ring and she attributed it to the idea that she had improved her feng shui and, and that this had helped her. But these uh, people to me, these paintings, these pairs, I think about, and I'm going to switch brushes now, now I'm going to go over to this Filbert. Um, this is a uh, American painter, 4500 size 12. And again, you can use any brushes that you like. You could use a round brush for this, you know, really any brush that you enjoy. So. Now we're going to develop the kind of the lighter portions of the pears. And notice that I'm not doing, I'm trying to avoid the idea of bowling balls. When I say bowling ball, meaning we want to avoid, um, when we're doing fruits or really any other things like this, we want to avoid the idea that 
uh, the pears or the things are, are like overly rounded in a way that they don't have any angles. So one thing I love about pears is they do have a lot of angle. And then that they, I'm going to get some orange going in here. Uh, they have uh, little nooks and crannies. They, they have like, it's like a real body, you know, they've got this thing going. So I'm putting, when I'm putting the brush on, I'm doing it at angles. Kind of reinforce this idea. So, so what I don't want to do is just do like a loop-de-loop -loop like that. I want to try and think about where on the pair I'm seeing an, an angle. So now I'm going to go back in here with our shadow color and reinforce this idea of an angle. Let's do the same thing over here on the top of her. So this color is, um, this is basically the same color I was using when I drew the line for the start of a painting. This is the uh, phthalo phthalo blue red shade mixed with the yellow ochre. I love using yellow ochre in my work because it has this uh, wonderful, it's like a gray. It actually technically is a gray because you can make your own version of yellow ochre by mixing yellow and purple together. All right, so now let's introduce a little bit of green into our pears. And you can see I'm doing like a super colorful pear. You don't really have, I mean, you can, you can do this. However, if you, you know, have certain colors you want to use, there's, there's really no rhyme or reason about, about what, um, what colors are used here. Just the idea, as long as you get the volume going and that you get the feeling of angles. So let's come back in here now and soften some of the transitions. So I'm using, this is that same color that we had used on the cloth here. And also, depending on what your goals are, you might decide, oh, I, I want to do a, I want to do pairs that are very abstract and have these geometric forms. You know, that might be the style that you want to do. Or you might say, oh, you know, I want to go for more realism. So it's really just what are your goals? Uh, what do you want to do with your painting? And then you just kind of take it from there. So now I'm going to go back and redefine some of these areas here. The shade, let's go back and restate our shade color. Get a little bit under her stem. When I do that now, I'm going to come back over with my brush and make sure I have a really soft edge. Softening your edges is really important. The fruit also, so over on this side, we need to soften this as well. And I'm going to come back and I have a, this is black. I'm going to go in and get that grounded one, that grounded area. And let's go in and do our stem. And I need to make sure my stem is attached to the fruit. Just do one stroke. Then what we'll do is we'll come back with, let's come back with a little bit of a, maybe a darker color next to that orange. Let's, uh, let's put some of the red in. 
And then let's soften the edge by adding color along here. Do the same thing here. I can come back on top with more of my orange. This wonderful yellow, this is like a, a cad yellow uh, medium. I love to use this color. It, it feels like to me like sunshine in a can is what I like to call it, but basically this yellow is a, uh, it's a bright, wonderful color. I feel like it goes with a lot of things. Let's get him going here. And now, I want to I want to blend but I want to not over blend. So here I mixed, I inadvertently got the orange where I didn't want it. That's fine. I can just come back with a little bit more color. And uh, no problem. So in order to blend, there are different ways to blend. One way is to push and pull the paint through. Another way, like that, I can blend just with the individual stroke, just to break the plane of color. Back again onto the red, and let's deepen our, our red color. So the red got the red mixed in now with, um, notice I'm overlapping and allowing this shadow color to integrate in with the wall color because it's again the wall and the, I'm letting it overlap. Come back again with our orange. Adding this second coat really gives the feeling of a, the paint is much thicker and richer. That texture is nice. Notice that I'm letting the color, I'm also brushing the color up onto the fruit because the fruit lives here in this red room. And so there needs to be some of the red brushing up against and onto the fruit itself. Let's go and think a little bit more about the background. I'm going to go back in and I'm going to apply this darker color. This is just literally just yellow ochre. Let me go in and apply this color so that it reinforces the idea of the, of the light raking across our, our tablecloth. Oh, whoops. Look what happened here. I'll show you how to fix this. What happened was, as I'm working across, my brush got caught up into that wet black, but no problem, we can get rid of that really easily. Sometimes these little things happen and then, as long as you get at it quickly, no one will be the wiser. All right, let's, almost got him here kind of actually like that little color that was added in there. We'll just leave it. At that point, let's add a little bit more of the light coming through. Be careful of that. I'll be careful of that 
wet area when I get to it. I'm going to let the color go kind of really all the way across the painting. And we'll come back again with this other color and just play them one into the other just to let the paint talk to us here. There we go. I like that. Then I'm looking at this purple in the background and I'm feeling like it's a little bit bright. So what I'll do is I'm going to take that color and tone it down. It's more time with edges than you actually do with applying the paint initially. So now let's go in and uh, and evaluate what we need to do. So, so we need to work on that stem. I'm going to create a color here uh, with black and I'm going to add some yellow ochre in it and I'm going to give the stem a bit of personality. There we go. And we'll give her stem a little bit of personality too. The stems were a little bit too thin and I think they kind of, I'll say they lacked personality but they um, I think what they needed was a little bit of three-dimensionality added in here. So let's do a top on that guy. There we go. Water here to my paint. And then I can sign. It's always important to sign your work too because people want to see who made it. And it becomes really a part of the, the work itself. All right, well, there we go. Thank you so much for watching, and this is Dina Tollefson. Until next time, bye bye.